Hi guys, so I wanted to do another response video to Jeff, my good friend, who's a Brexiteer. And uh, in this video, he's talking about how Boris Johnson is going to really upset the EU. So let's hear what he had to say. You can just imagine Boris on the phone to the President of the EU, Commission Ursula von der Leyen, saying, You know that withdrawal agreement we both signed last year? Well, it's broke, so I'm going to rewrite it. Cue much flapping and squealing from Eurocrats. Okay, but the word agreement means there are two sides or two parties, at least two, that agree on something. So Boris Johnson can't unilaterally change the withdrawal agreement. It, that's why it's an agreement. It's between two parties, the UK and the EU. Boris Johnson can attempt to change it, but he can't change what's in it. Uh, it without the agreement of the EU. This doesn't make any sense. It's like if I have a contract with my employer and the contract says that I have to work on Sundays, for example, and I decide after a number of Sundays, I don't want to work Sundays anymore and I stop working on Sundays. What happens? Well, I break the contract. So you're asking Boris Johnson to break the agreement. I'm going to come back later as to why that's a problem. It does appear that our negotiators believe that there are some flaws in the withdrawal agreement originally drawn up by Theresa May and Ollie Robbins, with a senior UK source reported as saying, Unfortunately, we couldn't fix every defect with the withdrawal agreement last autumn. We had to prioritise abolishing the backstop and getting Brexit done in... <laughs> Abolishing, okay, abolishing the backstop, but getting Brexit done, we had to prioritise getting Brexit done. It's, obviously, this is this is an example, this is very clear, that the negotiators were not prepared. The people who worked on Theresa May's team didn't know fully what they were writing, and they left stuff out. And then when they uh, attempted to um, get it through Parliament... They had problems. And then when Boris Johnson uh, copied what Theresa May had actually created, that's basically what he did. He copied and modified a few things. Um, he didn't read it either, or his administration didn't bother to read it, didn't bother to study it. And now they're attempting to fix mistakes that uh, they had signed up to. It's like if I didn't bother to read the contract of a, my job, and it said, you have to come to work by car, by your own car. If I didn't bother to read the contract, then I can't say after, well, actually, uh, I want to change that part of the contract without your agreement. In the face of a parliament that was trying to stop us. We'll now have to do our best to fix it, but we're starting with a clear disadvantage. And one of those defects is that the system of geographical indicators that protects the naming of things like regional foods and drinks operates only one way. And I'll leave you to work out which way that is for yourself. Now I do have to ask, if the withdrawal agreement is so flawed, why didn't we just leave without a deal on the 31st of January? We might actually, right now, have been in a much better position to deal with this pandemic. And how, Jeff, how would you be in a better position to deal with the pandemic? You're under no obligation to source PPE and ventilators from the EU. The EU had set up a scheme to source these, these materials, these resources, to fight this pandemic, and the UK rejected it. You were within your mean, you were completely free to reject it, and you, dis and you rejected it. So in what way were you blocked by the EU? In what way were your hands tied in fighting this pandemic? You seem to be the only one who's talking about this. I don't hear anyone else on the Brexit side saying, yeah, at least if we could get out, if we weren't in the transition period, we could have actually fought this pandemic better. Wonder if there's any self-kicking going on amongst the number 10 team at the moment over that one. And if there are more flaws like this in the treaty, that could have got through if May had kept even a slim majority, 
then it shows just how badly served we were by that previous clan. But, th but it wasn't that there wasn't something in the withdrawal agreement because Theresa May couldn't get it through Parliament. They made an agreement with the EU. The problem now is that there are aspects that Boris Johnson doesn't like. But he agreed it with the European Union. So the Boris Johnson of a few months ago agreed something with the EU. And now the Boris Johnson of today is having a problem with that. And you think he's right. How, are, how is he right? He didn't bother to read the withdrawal agreement. His team couldn't be bothered to actually read it and understand what it's about. Clownish Tory administration. Wonder what Brussels will make of Boris's pronouncement. Especially as the EU's chief Brexit negotiator, Michel Barnier, is already flustered because he can't get the UK to meekly accept his tailor-made EU straitjacket. Uh, what straitjacket is this? Barnier is lecturing us about how we must fulfil the obligations in the political declaration. He's asking you because you agreed it. What's the point in having an agreement if one side tears it up and walks away? So this creates a precedent. This creates a big problem for the future for the UK. Because if Boris Johnson doesn't respect an agreement like the withdrawal agreement, and he says, I'm, going, I'm not going to respect it, then why would the EU negotiate on anything with the UK in the future. So this is something that Brexiteers are very convenient to leave out. What happens the day after the end of the transition period? Really, Brexiteers, please tell me what's going to happen. Well, I can guess at what's going to happen. You will have to go back to the European Union the day after the end of the transition period and what? Negotiate a deal. You will have to do that. If you want to trade, if you want to sell goods or services with, within the European Union, you would have to negotiate a trade deal or some type of deal. Trade is only one aspect, but let's just focus on trade at the moment. So in order to trade, you'll need to have a trade deal. Now imagine Boris Johnson has told the EU one week before or a few months before even, I'm not going to respect any trade deals. I'm not going to respect any agreements. So why would they sit down after and say, well, now, as you know, you tore up the uh, previous agreement. Now we're going to sit down and have an agreement with you. In the same way, Donald Trump tore up the Iran deal. Who's going to have a deal with the United States, with, with Donald Trump in charge, if he's going to tear up an, a deal willy nilly? In the same way, who's going to do a deal with Boris Johnson's administration if at any moment he'll say, well, I don't, actually, I haven't read the agreement and there are parts of it I don't like now, even though I've signed it, I'm going to tear it up. Do you, does anyone see the problem here? And our side politely responds by reminding him that the political declaration is non-binding. What it actually does is establishes the parameters of an ambitious, broad and deep partnership. And, okay, it's non-binding. The withdrawal agreement is binding. The political declaration is a plan for the future. But if you tear it up, if you ignore it, what it, what it does is it, it diminishes a goodwill between the two sides. So why would the European Union, after the transition period has ended. You're, you're celebrating for the, you know, you're already celebrating the end of the transition period. You're jumping up and down. Yes, we're going to leave the European Union without a, without a deal. We're ending the transition period. Jeff, please tell me what happens after? What happens the day after, the week after, the month after the end of the transition period? I, I would love to know. I am speculating. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you know it better. Tell me what happens. Because I'm assuming that you will go back to the European Union and you will say, we want a trade deal. <laughs> and they will say, go F yourself. Well, maybe they won't go that badly, but they will say, 
Oh, you really want a trade deal? Are you sure? Because the last one we, last time we had an agreement, you tore it up. Boris Johnson didn't like parts of it, even though he signed it. You're extremely trustworthy. Let's have a think about it first. And a source close to the UK Brexit negotiator, David Frost, said, Establishing a framework is not the same as meaning everything must go in a legally binding treaty. Michel Barnier seems to think he is the referee, when actually he is a player on the pitch. Um, no, it's not like a player on the pitch. And this is just, unfortunately, this is just political speech. Uh, for the consumption of the British public. This is not about what happens within the negotiations. We, we may never actually hear. We don't know what happens. We don't know everything that's said because it happens. a lot of it happens behind closed doors. Some of it is available to the public, but a lot of it goes, happens behind closed doors and we may, we may never hear about it. So it's someone to say that... Yes, he's acting like the referee or whatever. This is just part of the tactics, political tactics, to show, yes, we are fighting, we are doing our, our bit, we are holding the EU to account. It's for the consumption of Brexiteers. It's not really based on reality. Oh, what a great turn of phrase. And absolutely correct. And How do you know this, Jeff? How do you know it's absolutely correct? You're still comparing apples and oranges here. You're comparing the UK. You, you believe the UK is uh, the equivalent of the EU, that they're on the same page, that, you know, in size, in trade, in political power. I'm, I'm sorry, but Jeff, that day has long passed. The UK is no longer that great power it was 100 years ago. The EU is slightly different now than you're not dealing with France, you're not dealing even with Germany, you're not dealing with Spain or Italy, you're dealing with the European Union. There is a bit of a difference. Anyway, the political declaration is just a high level negotiating framework and not an agreed structure set in law on how the resulting agreement must look. The next event is the high-level meeting via conference call between the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson, the President of the EU Commission Ursula von der Leyen, the President of the EU Council Charles Michel and the President of the EU Parliament David Sassoli. It should result in a declaration by the EU that insufficient progress has been made and that we should extend the talks. And a firm no from Boris. <laughs> Again, you, you believe that's what he's going to do. I don't know what he's going to do. You sound quite confident that Boris is going to do that, but I can't be confident that Boris will do anything. Boris could resign tomorrow. Boris could um, divorce his, his wife. No, I don't know if he's married yet. Um, you know, Boris could do 100 different things that are not based on any plan or anything that has come before. Boris is extremely unreli unreliable, but also unpredictable. And with just over three weeks to go until the 30th of June, after which extending the talks is impossible under the withdrawal agreement, and no signs at all of any buckling on the UK side, then the days of our being under EU control look set to be definitely ended on the 31st of December. Looks like the UK tactics are working. What tactics? What tactics are working here? You, all you've presented is Boris Johnson is talking about tearing up an agreement. Boris Johnson is going to say no to an extension. And, and all you've said is that there are certain sources who are saying that uh, Michel Barnier is acting like a referee. But it ain't over yet, and the UK pro-EU lobby are bound to still have one or two dirty tricks up their sleeves. What UK pro-UK lobby? Lobby? You mean the parties? You mean the parties that were elected into Parliament? You have a problem with parties in Parliament? 
that are in a minority. Th see, there's this, maybe this is Project Fear. <laughs> you know, always be afraid of the Labour Party, the Lib Dems, Lib Dems, there's, I don't know how many, one or two of them left. The Green, there's one, there's a Green, the SNP in Scotland, they might throw a spanner in the works. Um, yeah, they're, treat them as a, as, treat all of them as a major threat to Brexit. Because you need to keep the passion high, you need to keep the, the wheels turning, the propaganda moving ahead. Because even though Boris Johnson has a majority, I think Brexiteers are a little bit worried. They don't trust Boris. They know that he's unreliable. They know that he uh, would say one thing one day and something else another. Look at what happened in Northern Ireland. Now finally, Boris might be upsetting the Eurocrats but he is also upsetting many people in this country by his inaction and that of his ministers and the police forces regarding certain events in our cities. Absent without leave springs to mind. <laughs> it's interesting how Jeff is very careful about what language he uses because he doesn't want <laughs> to damage the channel. Anyway, if you want to hear more from me, please don't forget to... Okay, but once again... If Boris Johnson doesn't respect an agreement, then he's going to damage the UK image with the European Union. So then later, when he wants an agreement at the after the end of the transition period, they're going to say, well, you are unreliable. So why would we go into an agreement with you? I think it's very simple. This is bravado on the side of uh, the Brexiteers. The Brexiteers love this. They say, see, yes, he's going to tear up any agreement. He's going to tell them to go F themselves. He's going to stick up two fingers to the European Union. Okay, that's good and fine if you if that works, you know, if, it's, if it um, floats your boat. But what happens after? You know, what happens after the transition period? I'd like to hear from Jeff or I'd like to hear from uh, some Brexiteers as to what happens after the end of the transition period. Don't say that you're not going to go to the European Union and ask for a deal, because you know you will if you want to sell goods and services in Europe. And it's not going to be a case of the European Union coming begging uh, for a deal. They're not begging at the moment. They're saying if you want a deal, these are the conditions, but you're, you, you will need to extend, extend the transition period. There's no other way if you want to have a comprehensive deal. Anyway, let me know in the comments, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks. Why not become a Patreon and enjoy access to our Discord server where we share news, chat, and have some fun. If you become a Patreon, you can also make video suggestions on topics that are important to you. Check it out via the link in the description.